What is going on guys, Rewinds here, and in this video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my review for Dragon Ball Daima, episode number three. So, we kick off this episode, leaving Earth with Glorio, Goku, and the Supreme Kai, and we're pretty much headed to the Demon Realm. So, last week's episode was a good setup episode, we got some things moving, it definitely wasn't as exciting of an episode as episode one was, but this week, on the other hand, I feel like we did pick up in terms of excitement. So I don't think episode three was as exciting as episode one either, per se, but episode three definitely made things a lot more interesting. The first half of the episode definitely did start out a little bit on the slower end. We got to get a lot more lore interactions and lore um i want to say being given out to people like goku from the supreme kai and lore being given out by glorio as well so it was really cool in terms of lore expansion but then the second half of the episode definitely moved the plot along to set up the premise for what's going to be coming out in episode four and a little bit going forward so i can really appreciate that but let's talk about what happened exactly the start of the episode they're headed over to someone named warp and warp is the uh goldfish looking like creature according to goku that transports people from the demon realm to the regular realm and glorio pretty much in this interaction before they get to warp is reiterating that he was told to bring goku to help defeat king goma and he was told to do this by the third uh by the king of the third demon world and there was a little bit of hesitation though i feel like that was seen on his face when goku's talking to the supreme kind of background and says that they got to save dende and return back to regular size so that's just making me wonder if like oh is glorio kind of just thinking okay i want to use these guys to help us defeat king goma but then after that i don't really want them returning back to regular size either because they're potentially a threat to us as well so i think that's possible so the location of where goku and supreme kai and glory are about to go from or go to i think is planet batapi i believe it was called and that location gets relayed over to kibito as well so that later on when he ends up coming by that he can bring the others with so in order to pass through warp though to the demon realm one has to be a demon so supreme kai actually did some magic to make goku's ears look pointy in that moment just so that they could pass by which i think was pretty smart by him and then supreme kai follows it up with a not so smart moment he forgets to tell kibito the pin number of what's needed to actually go from the regular realm to the demon realm so that's something they're gonna have to figure out down the line whenever we get there so we travel through this area where now they're picking which um demon world they're supposed to go to which turns out to be the third one and this happens to be the furthest from the first where goma would be located at once they get there a demon realm tunnel is also revealed and this is actually covered by a shield of light that would normally lead to the other two worlds so it used to be a passageway between world one two and three but supreme kai says ever since that he's been a kid it ended up getting blocked up so pretty much things kind of just strictened up there for some reason warp is only allowed um to use typically by the people of the first demon world and select people from the second demon world so this is kind of making me think maybe the third demon world is actually perhaps a area that's kind of seen as a little bit more rough perhaps there's people in the third demon world that are just not as strong when it comes to in power in comparison to the people in the first demon world maybe they're you know maybe this could be the rougher edges of that place this could basically be the universe's universe 9 version for example where there's a lot more crime and stuff going on and that's kind of revealed a little bit more too a little bit based off of just the kind of people uh goku glorio and supreme kai encounter later in the episode so maybe it's kind of like 
the king of the demon world being um well the general king of the demon realm being king goma who rules over all of them maybe king goma and the first demon world are probably a lot stronger in power and probably a lot more better off whereas the second demon world might be a little bit more mixed and then the third one possibly could just be one that has a lot of rough problems going on so that's what i'm guessing this could be implying so glorios asked why is he allowed to travel since he supposedly works for the demon world uh well since he works for the third demon world's king supposedly but glorio says he does work in the first demon world so that gives him access however he serves i think the third demon world king once we land on the planet we see a deborah statue which i thought was cool and in general i just like the planet's aesthetics in general i really like what toei's been doing overall when it comes to a lot of the scenery and just like even scenes when they enter a building and stuff the lighting the shading on the characters everything is just looks so much nicer that you can tell that they had their time to actually work on the show so i really do appreciate that so once they land goku's actually feeling like he's moving slower glorio reveals it's due to the gas on the planet that's making the air heavy however the gas is harmless so it just makes it tougher to move Supreme Kai is then revealed to be something called a Glind, so that might be his race's name perhaps, and his race apparently originates from the second demon world, and Glory also throws in a little shot at him by saying apparently they never checked in on the third, so again implying that the third is a little bit more of a rougher patch of place, so... This is interesting about the Supreme Kai though because I do think that this might be a retcon to something that was said in author comments perhaps before by Toriyama. Maybe he changed it or maybe there's just a little bit more info that's going to come. But I remember watching a video before in the past talking about how the Kais, you know, Supreme Kai and the others that are his siblings would have originated typically from a Shinju tree. So... This is interesting to hear that um, he, he just has like a whole race of people in the demon world perhaps. Or maybe the Shinju tree is still around there somewhere in the second demon world. We don't know yet, but I'm sure they'll touch on that a little, more, a little bit more later. Goku also almost fell into a darkness sea, which Glorio says would have resulted in instant obliteration. After that, some bandits fire arrows at Goku... They happen to be slow, though, and Goku dodges pretty easily. Glorio dodges these bandits' arrows with ease and is moving really fast and shoots at them to drive them away. And the animation looked pretty smooth and nice on that moment when Glorio had. Glorio says that for the day that they'll stay at a hotel tonight and then tomorrow they'll meet up with King Kadan. So King Kadan or Kadan is gonna be the king of the third demon world it sees we didn't get any indication of what he looks like yet in this episode but at least we have a name reveal and the reason why they got to stay at a hotel is because they have to fly slow or the heavier air would end up breaking the ship so they're literally just coasting by they end up landing in this town and as they're going through they're getting some dirty looks which i'm assuming was due to goku having rounded ears instead of pointy ears so they might have a feeling he's an outsider once they get into the hotel, Glorio's being asked by the hotel guy for 30000 and Glorio says no and gets really mad and pulls him, well, not really mad, but he, he says that's, you know, a terrible price and all that, and he pulls him in close to show him his gun, and immediately he gets his price reduced to 5000 So Glorio's been a pretty cool character so far, I want to say. I've enjoyed the addition of him so far, and, you know, this is really our first episode. We're really, really getting to see him this much, and... So far, I think he's making a good impression, at least on me. Let me know how you guys are feeling about him. But all in all, I'm enjoying it. And I think the reason he got the price reduced was not just because he had a gun, but more so because they may realize that he's a worker of the first demon world with that gun, perhaps. That's what I'm guessing. After that, Goku says he's hungry, and there happens to be a bar across the road where they go. People give them some dirty stairs in there. Goku ends up asking for five hamburgers since he already ate before they left Earth. I find that funny that that's like a low portion for Goku, but that's such a Goku thing to do. So 
he gets five hamburgers on a light stomach and Goku's eating but then he starts getting in some trouble because some people at the bar start coming up to him saying hey you're not from the demon world are you you don't have pointy ears Glorio tells them to get lost but they still try giving trouble so Glorio goes and ends up actually easily defeating two of them with no problem Goku beats uh, two of them then goes back to eating and meanwhile he's he defeated those two he's saying damn it's still hard to move but he still did beat them with ease after that Goku says I need to get used to this air so he just goes on and takes on everybody and while he's doing this the animation is pretty damn solid it's nothing crazy to brag home about but it's definitely not bad by any means it's very um, solid smooth movement uh, just not very aesthetic because it's just you know simple hand-to-hand -hand beat down by Goku just Goku landing you know a couple blows on some people but I really did enjoy it the fight felt very fun and um, I'm excited to see how this series is gonna look when a big fight comes around and animation's gonna amp up even more I'm very curious to see that uh, Goku then after the fight after he beats them up he asks for another burger and pretty much then they end up going to the hotel and we get a little scene throughout the night talking about some two of the bandits are running and they're saying we'll show them and then the morning comes around glorio gets goku and the supreme kai from their room and they get going and i also do want to say again another example of toei doing their thing right now making things look good i really did enjoy how the hotel room even looked just the shading of everything for the art just looked really nice so shout out to them for that i really am appreciating some of these little details that they're taking the time to do so and i'm saying that also because it's giving the series a different kind of feel in some scenes and i think that's something that unfortunately some of the early parts of super lacked because of the production schedule so it's nice to see some changes in a positive direction here so after they get out of the room and out of the hotel they find out that glorio's plane has indeed been stolen and that's when the episode ends off setting us up for a rescue mission in the next episode i believe the next episode is going to be titled chatty and the little preview they gave that was like five to ten seconds was goku actually in action and the animation was definitely getting crazier than i think what we've seen so far and that was just a five ten second tidbit so i feel like we're gonna get some exciting action next episode so definitely look forward to that i know i am but i've also been enjoying where the story's been going so far just happy to have Dragon Ball back and done by Akira Toriyama as his you know latest final work and uh, it's pretty cool to see that so far it's been going pretty well hopefully it sticks like that I still do want to hear of course what kind of potential stuff Akira Toriyama might left behind for Super because I know he was very um, involved in certain parts for example the granola arc and we know he did a lot of superheroes so we know he was involved, it's just a matter of did he leave anything else behind or is it just going to be Toyotaro taking the rums now. But all in all, this episode, really, really enjoyed it. Great episode. Not my favorite, but my second favorite episode of the series so far. Better than episode two though. So right now my ranking would be one, three, two for which episodes I like the most. I'm going to give this episode a eight and a half out of ten. I definitely would love to hear what you guys would give it to in the comments below. So definitely let me know. But that's going to wrap up this one. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. And as always, I hope you guys have a good day or night whenever you guys are watching this video. I'm Rewinds, and I'm out.